morning. Today is Monday, February the 28th, last day of this month, and we'll be heading into the March time of the season. I, I love the season changes, especially the spring, uh, seeing all the daffodils begin to bloom and the tulip trees and other flowering plants. I actually had my first azalea blooms that I noticed this weekend, and so spring is here, and uh, well, not officially, but uh, it's coming. And so uh, I love that time of the year, and that means that our season of Easter is coming up soon, and we have a lot of important things coming up around that time of the year. Be thinking and be praying. Uh, oftentimes, Easter is probably one of the most uh, well-attended services of the year, and Palm Sunday and Easter, we've got some special things planned, and we really want to take advantage of that time and invite family members, friends, uh, those who do not know Christ in your life, that they would come on Easter Sunday morning and uh, we'll pray and ask God that he would bring in a harvest. And so we're looking forward to that. Just a couple of a couple of housekeeping announcements for you. Um, this week we'll finish the Gospel of John. We've been journeying through that uh, for some time now. And I've decided to uh, spend the next few months in the book of Hebrews during my quiet time, so we'll be going through the book of Hebrews, although on that Passion Week we'll take a, a side step and I'll be doing a daily devotion every day for seven days uh, leading up to Easter Sunday morning, and so uh, I want to encourage you to, to share that information with friends, people you might know. Uh, our, our, our goal is to share the Word of God and pray and trust that those who uh, tune in on our daily devotions might hear the gospel and be saved or be encouraged through the word. For those who are believers, it's a time just to come together and be in the word. And so uh, just be praying about those upcoming events. Um, this morning, we're going to be begin to look at Jesus uh, being crucified in John chapter 19. And as I was reading through the portion of the chapter uh, this morning in my quiet time, this old hymn came to my mind, but it's it's a it's an old hymn with a new stanza written to it, and I love the combination. I think I've done it one other time on the daily devotion, but it's the old hymn at the cross. Alas, and my Savior be, and did my sovereign.
I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. What an incredible song. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. I'm reminded of what Billy Graham once said, at least I think it was Billy Graham. It's been attributed to him, so we'll, we'll go with that. Billy Graham made the statement at, that all ground is level at the foot of the cross, meaning there's no hierarchy, um, there's no privileged ones that come to Christ, but Christ is a savior of the world. Um, not just your Savior, not just my Savior, although He is our Savior, but He is the Savior of the world. Regardless of male or female, regardless of nationality or ethnicity or race, re regardless of language, Christ is the Savior of the world. And so what a privilege that we have come to know Christ and we recognize and acknowledge again it's not because of anything that we have done that we've come to know Christ. We simply responded to the gospel of Christ when we heard it and we placed our trust in Him. And so we thank God this morning for Him saving us. We're well, picking up in John chapter 19, all that made it possible for Him to save us is about to culminate and, and come to a close here in the life and ministry of Jesus. After Jesus had been there before Pilate and, and Jesus... Uh, expressed to Pilate that he would have no authority except it had been given by God. In other words, Christ's authority was far greater than Caesar's authority. Pilate was carrying the name of Caesar and did everything under the authority of Caesar. Um, Caesar sought to try to release Jesus, but, but the Jews would have nothing to do with it. They were so bent on having Christ crucified that when the opportunity was laid there before them by Pilate, they elected not to, and so um, again, he, Pilate expresses uh, to him that uh, that 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 Christ had had professed to be a king, and and I find it interesting here that the Jews responded to Pilate when he said this that we have no king except for Caesar, um, and they had they had bowed down, had rejected Messiah for an earthly kingdom and an earthly king, uh, who is not Jewish, by the way. Caesar certainly was not Jewish. And, and I thought about that and contemplated that. How often do we possibly bend our knee to uh, sovereign nations or sovereign kings, uh, earthly kings, at, at the expense of, of forsaken Christ? Um, but anyway, so, so beginning in verse uh, 16, the latter part of that, so they took Jesus, verse 17, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. Now I find it interesting here that Jesus bore his own cross. Not only would he bear his own cross across the sign to him, but in that he would bear our sins, the burden that you and I um, uh, should have carried, Jesus chose to carry his own cross. And on that, the symbol of our sins being placed on the shoulders of Jesus. And they led him to a place called Golgotha. And there it says that they crucified and with him two others, one on either side and Jesus between them. And we know that they were a thief and robber on each side of Jesus. And so we see Jesus, the King of the Jews, the King of the world, the Messiah, being crucified on this place called Golgotha, the place of the skull, in between two men that perhaps were deserving of capital punishment, but Jesus certainly was not. And so here he is crucified with them, but we have to remember that Jesus was being submissive to the will of the Father. We remember as he prayed in the garden, Father, not, not, thy, not my will, but thy will be done. And so Jesus willingly laid down his life. Jesus had said, no one takes my life, but I willingly lay it down. And the more I contemplate on that, the more I meditate on the fact that that Jesus willingly laid down his life, that Jesus willingly went to the cross and he willingly had your sins and my sins placed on him, that I just get overwhelmed in some sense thinking about it. It never gets old 
this gospel message that Jesus in our place took on our sins on himself to be a sacrifice and a payment for our sins. Not only did he take our sins on himself, but he took on himself the wrath of God, a wrath that you and I deserved. He took it on himself for us. And so the beginning of verse 19, it says, Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. And it read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription for the place that Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. And I can't help but think Pilate was just taking a jab here at the Jews um, and, and declaring that Jesus was their king. And he and inscribed it on the sign there above Jesus in all three languages that would have been spoken in that region during that time. And the Jews saw it. They saw that, that he had declared Jesus the king of the Jews. Now, of course, we know from Scripture that Jesus was the fulfillment of the Davidic line as the king of the Jews. And he hasn't realized that yet, but we'll see that when the millennial kingdom comes. Or I say we'll see that. We may not see it. We may not be here. We will witness it where, where Jesus will return and he'll march through the eastern gate of Jerusalem. And for a thousand years, he will rule and reign during the millennial period. So he will fulfill that prophecy of David having a kingdom that will last forever. But not yet. It, the time has still not come for that. And so in some sense, Pilate was reaffirming, I guess, that prophecy that, uh, that the Messiah would be coming. And Jesus was the one who was Messiah and King of the Jews. And so the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am a king of the Jews. And then Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. And so there was declared on that day that Jesus was in fact the king of the Jews. Although again, that kingdom would be realized during the millennial reign of Christ. Verse 23, when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in a one piece from top to bottom. And so they said to one another, let us not tear it, but let's cast lots for it to see uh, whose it shall be. For this was to fulfill the scripture, which says, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. This was prophesied about the Messiah. And so here we see another one of hundreds of prophecies that have, made about, have been made about the Messiah would be fulfilled in the life of Christ. Carrying on, so the soldiers did these things, but standing by the cross of Jesus was his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus saw his mother and the disciples, whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his home. Now we understand this disciple that Jesus was speaking to was probably none other than John himself who recorded the gospel. And so we see here on the cross, Jesus uh, having a concern and a love for his mother. Now, this does not elevate um, Mary, his mother, to, to the degree that, that many want to elevate her to, uh, particularly the Catholic Church. Um, but it just simply signifies and recognizes the fact that Jesus was in fact the mother, the Virgin Mary, who would bear the Son of God, the Messiah. And so Jesus now turns her over uh, to John, and John is given the responsibility of taking care of his mother. Well, I pray the Lord today would give you and I an opportunity to, to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart. And if we recognize that a seed has already been planted there in someone's heart, that God would give us the wisdom to be able to cultivate that seed so that um, God, by his grace, we might be able to witness that person coming to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. I want to ask you to remember to pray for Bree, Zach, Pastor Zach's wife. She's still in the hospital today. She's doing better, uh, expecting her to be released tomorrow. But would you pray for them? Pray for Zach, especially in this situation where he just has all the responsibilities that he carries here. 
Um, reach out to them if you happen to have their contact information. Just encourage them. Express your love to them. Well, I pray the Lord blesses you and keeps you and His face shines upon you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning on our daily devotion. And isn't it good to come together every day with this? I just, I just love connecting with all of you each day. Have a great day and God bless you.